we are now at one of my favorite topics to teach and which is measurements and communicating impact look if you're doing a strategy if you have a plan you're doing a comms activity and you're not measuring you're not evaluating first of all you're not measuring and i'll tell you the difference in this video you're not evaluating you're not measuring you're to be honest you're not it's not a good use of your time you want to be able to evaluate you want to be able to measure and at the end of the day when you create your report it's not just to say we got x number of followers x number of engagement you must communicate it in such a way that it has meaning to the people that you're reporting to so either that's your board that that's your CEO, that's your senior leaders, all your external stakeholders. So in this video, we're really going to be looking at measurement tactics, measurement tips and principles. I will share with you some tools. There are many tools that are coming, you know, every single day. What I tend to do is I, I have my ears out on what is the latest tool for those that have like a free trial version. I will test it. I will play around with it. I will just go on Google and say, um, tool to measure or tool to track hashtag tool to track X, Y, Z different tools will come up. I just play around with it and I create my report. But at the end of the day, the thing is, as you're measuring, you must, you must be able to communicate it in such a way that it speaks the language of the people that you are reporting to. And that's what we're going to look at in this video welcome to the sixth video in this bite-sized comms course on strategic communication there is no way i will do a strategic communications course without talking about measurements and that's really an area that we all need to improve that we all need to do better but it can be overwhelming sometimes trying to figure out where to start if you don't have the tools, trying to put the framework in place to allow you to measure effectively. So I'm just going to be sharing with you the principles and tips that can help you to measure and also communicate the impact of your work. I believe that comms professionals and comms teams work hard. They do a lot of great stuff, but unfortunately, that value is not seen because it's not being measured. And in the time where it's been measured, it's not communicated in a way that really demonstrates the value the organization wants to see. So in this video, I want you to be able to open your mind to just understanding why measurement is important. Because, you know, I've, I've had conversations with comms professionals and say, why should we be contributing to sales? We, our work doesn't bring sales it doesn't, but let's let's take a step back and think about it. You're working within an organization, right? And an organization needs to make some sort of income to be able to pay um, for staff, pay for things internally, externally, and all of that. Now, how does this organization make money? And you remember that we spoke about this in the earlier video. If this organization is not able to do the business in which it operates, it's not able to sell properties, it's not able to sell whatever it is that is selling or whatever services that it's offering. And even if you're working in a non-profit or development organization, grants have stopped, there's no funding, nobody is donating. How is the organization going to pay you? <laughs> You have to think about it that way. So the work that you are doing must contribute to that bottom line at the end of the day. It must bring some sort of value that helps the organization to succeed because when the organization succeeds, you can be well paid. You can be advocating for more money. You can be advocating for more budget. And that's why it's important. So don't have this mindset of, oh, we don't bring sales. We can't measure the work that we do is creative. No, you are a strategic communicator. You are a, or you should should be a strategic advisor to an organization and every strategic advisor think about if you think about a corporate organization and the and the people that the advisors that they run to the legal legal is looking out for pitfalls and loopholes that will help the organization to stay afloat that will help them to have, avoid bankruptcy for example the investment teams they're also thinking about that how much more you as the communicator so i think enough said with that now measurement done well 
begins with the end in mind. It cannot be at the end. We've created our plan. We know what we are doing. We've done the tax. And I say, okay, so how do we measure this? No, you have to think about it from the very beginning. Because if you don't measure, you won't be able to say what worked and what didn't. You won't even be able to know how you're going to measure what it is that you set out to measure, how you will measure your objective if you don't think about it at the very beginning. So you want to know what you want to achieve and you should be able to show whether it has been achieved or not. So as you're creating your comms plan, as you're developing your objective, you're thinking about oh, this is what we want to achieve. And these are the things that you need to note about measurement. It's really about the big picture. What do we want to achieve? What does this organization want to achieve? Because that is where the connection point comes. So this organization wants to increase market share. If you remember the market share example, that is the big picture. So everything that we do, whether we say we want to write newsletters, we want to build X, Y, Z, must lead to that overall goal. And then how are we going to be able to measure that the things that we we are doing is contributing. Yes, comms does not have a direct influence on market share, but there is an indirect influence because we manage reputation, we manage perception and market share. Again, like I said to you, if you understand the indices that affect market share, you will see where comms comes into that. And so you definitely, most importantly, have to start with what your organizational objectives are and then what your communication objectives are. Those two things are non negotiable. Please don't create a calm strategy or a plan without really being clear on what your organization wants to achieve and what your communication objectives are. And we've talked about communication objectives as well. Now, it requires you to have a baseline that will serve as a benchmark to track success. And this is what it means. So if, for example, you say you want to improve understanding, you want to improve reputation, you want to improve perception, how would you know that this has been improved? You need a baseline figure. It's just like, let me use something very common, weight loss and weight gain. How do you know that you have lost weight or you have gained weight? It's either you have a particular dress. When that dress starts becoming snug and tight, you know that you have added weight. Or when you step on the scale and you are seeing if you were formerly 65 kg and you are seeing 70, you can say, yes, I've added weight. But if you didn't have a number or something to benchmark against as a baseline. So I, I've been living, I don't know what my weight is. When I go on the scale and I see 70, there is no way I can say whether I've added weight or whether I've lost weight or whether my weight is the same. It's the same thing with our comms strategy is the same thing with the metrics that we want to track. Where are we now? What is our current reputation level? What is the current perception level? What is the current level of awareness? What is the current number of donors that we have? And then you break down the different um, factors. Where are donors? Where is sales coming from? I will talk more on data-driven communications in another bite-sized course because I want this to be really short and sharp, but you have to be able to set baseline. So you're creating, you're doing a social media campaign. You need to know what your current followers are. You need to know what your current or the average engagement level is. What is the current impression level? Which type of, if you look at your followers, how many percent is women? How many percent is men? Those numbers, you need to track it before you even start. Your click-through rate, for example, you're looking at your newsletter, your open rate, for who is commenting, how many comments, how many engagements are you currently getting? So that by the end of the campaign that you're doing, you can see how much growth has been achieved within one month, two months, three months. And then if you set, for example, that you want to achieve a growth of 125%, you'll be able to know, did we really achieve 125%? And let me say one more thing about benchmark. You have to consider the context. I will keep saying this. And this is why it's important. If you say, for example, we want to be the thought leader, we want to be number one within this industry, but then we want to improve our reputational index or brand equity by 40%. And that 40% doesn't help you to surpass the level that your competitor is in. That means that you're not going to be the industry leader. That means that you're not going to be number one because there's somebody who is currently ahead and has higher metrics or higher value than you. So you need to be looking at the industry as a whole. You need to be looking at the competitors and use 
that considering your own internal context, because if, for example, beating or surpassing the person in the first position will require a 200% increase, but you don't have the capacity to deliver 200% in one campaign or in one year, maybe you will need to break it down. But those are the factors you need to be thinking about. There's, you know, what we do is very creative, but there's the science behind it. And I'm very fascinated by the science, if you can't tell yet. <laughs> So in addition to measurement, you also have to evaluate. So this is usually where the problem is. So somebody calls me and says, oh, I don't know, we've been running this campaign for the last four months, you know, and we didn't achieve our numbers. We just were about to finish. And I'm like, why is it just now that you're flagging this thing? Why weren't you evaluating month one, month two? Because if you were evaluating by the end of month two, you would know that you're not hitting your, your, your target. And what usually becomes clear to me is that they didn't set smart objectives. They didn't pay attention to evaluation. They thought about measurement as an afterthought. So evaluation is conducted at specific moments in time. So sometimes it is midway, depending on the length of the project. Sometimes it can be at the end of every month. But you, it's very important to evaluate because evaluation helps you to say, mm, this isn't working. This isn't helping us to achieve our objective. So for example, we want to attract women, but we see that more men than women are engaging it then tell that's that says something see every data eh, that you get says something so if more men and women are engaging is it that we're using the wrong tactics is it that we're using the wrong channels is it that wait we're getting this our target audience wrong or what exactly is wrong and then you then make the changes so that at the end of the day you achieve what it is that you want to achieve it is also useful to assess how well you are doing in line with the objective set. I think I've pretty much explained that. And then it helps you to know what is working and what may need to be tweaked. And that's the important thing. You must keep an eye on it. You must be looking, are we on track? You know, is everything going as we want to with respect to the objectives that we've set? So here are some questions you will need to ask. What does my organization want to achieve? I think by the end of this class, this is what will be ringing in your head. I didn't know you just say, what does your organization want to achieve? What does your organization want to achieve? But it is very important. I think I've, I've explained why it is important. What do we want to achieve through our communication activity? So there's the broad overarching goal of the organization. What can comms contribute to it? As I've shared before, there are certain things that is not up to comms, but you can contribute. You can contribute, for example, creating awareness that then leads people to sales that they can then convert. You can create um, deeper understanding that brings people to support the cause or support your NGO, for example. You need to know what do we want to achieve through our communication activity, and that's where your objectives will come in. How will we know that we have achieved this? How are we going to track? Are we going to look at sentiment analysis? Are we going to look at media reviews? Are we going to do surveys to know that, oh, understanding or perception has changed? How will we know? Are we going to be looking at, for example, the kind of earned media that we get? Are we looking at industry recognition? You need to be able to know how you, you would tell that you've achieved your objective, right? And then what does success look like for our organization? You have to ask this thing. You might be thinking that success is A. And then your organization is like, no, is E. And then you're like, oops, yeah, you don't want to be there. So the way I work, I like to get on board the perspectives of all the relevant stakeholders. I may not agree with their perspective, but it helps me to know. I like information. I like knowing, I think for me, the worst thing is to go into something and I'm, I don't know what I'm going into. So you'll find me talking to people, talking to the CEO. So why is this important? And usually my clients, you know, organizations that I work with, I think you are always asking questions. Yes, you have to ask questions. I have to ask questions and questions help me to deliver, right? So by the time they see the results, like, mm, you have come again with your questions but they will answer what does success look like for our senior leaders i've worked with clients for example and you think that oh this grand thing we want to achieve for them and they're like no we didn't trend on twitter so this thing was not successful but you achieved other things and like because we didn't trend on it why is this important so it helps you to know what are the things that are important to them and this is also an opportunity for you to begin to educate them right some of them may have unrealistic expectations some of them may have 
um, an idea of comms that is not exactly what comms is. If you don't know, you're not able to address whatever issue that may be. And then how are we going to collect our baseline figures? So what is the current level of brand awareness? How are we going to determine this? What tools are we going to need? Um, for some of you, you may need to bring in an external research consultant to do. Some of you may not have the budget to do it. So what can you do internally to be able to get the baseline figures that you would need for your campaign or your communication activity? Now, here's an approach for effective measurement. Number one, you need to set smart and measurable objectives. This one is a non-negotiable. You need to establish your measurement framework. This differs from organization to organization, and I will talk more about it. It's really the foundation of what's would be required for you to effectively measure the work that you are doing for your organization. You need to choose the right metrics to measure. Some of us, the metrics that we are, we are putting out, it's not that they are not good. It's just that are they the right ones or are they being communicated in the right way? You need to decide on the measurement and evaluation tools you need and you need to put together your final report. So I will start with establishing your measurement framework. If you want a reminder on setting smart objectives. You can look at the video on the foundation for your comm strategy. You can also look at my video here on YouTube on objective setting that will help you with that. But your measurement framework really helps you to articulate communication performance. How well are we doing? Helps you to monitor progress. Are we moving forward? Are we in the same place? Or we're moving backward and then it helps you to demonstrate impact. Now, the key elements for your measurement framework, there are like two options that you can consider. One is to say, look, we're going to focus on output, outcomes, and impact, which I already talked about in video two. So we're going to be measuring the output. We're going to see how that output is impacting on the outcomes and how that is helping us to impact on what the organization wants to achieve. Another way you can look at it is you can look at the activity that we're doing. So activity is like output is what you create. So what are the things that you've done? Because you must show that the comms team is working. But then you're also looking at read. So how many people saw what we created? So we created a newsletter, we created content on social media, it reached X amount of people. That's fantastic, but you cannot stop there, right? Remember, the point of everything you measure and what you're doing has to be in the context of what's relevant to the organization. And so you take it a step further and you go to engagement. So out of the 1,000 people that were reached, how many of them are actually doing something with what you created? How many of them have responded to the call to action? If your call to action was visit the website, call, attend events, register. So you can have a thousand people reach, but 20% or 10%, you know, signed up or registered. Then, you know, you have your work cut out for you. If, for example, you're looking for 80% registration. So you're like, oh, we need to reach more people. Do, do we need to change something about our strategy? Do we need to change something about our channels? Maybe you're only focused on Instagram. Do we need to, you know, go um, offline and see how we can engage in person? Again, you can see how when you are evaluating, when you have measurement in mind, it really just helps you to be very effective. And then finally, you're looking at impact. So we have the 1,000 people that were reached. Let's say 50% of them were engaged. And at the end of the day, what did that bring on? But did we have, for example, out of the 50%, which is 500, you then had another 250 that signed on and the total worth of the program, service, or product they signed up for is X amount of dollars. So that's the result or changes produced when your activity reaches someone and they engage with it. And that's what will make your organization smile. So remember that I said that impact is not just about profit, right? There are different ways to think about it. You're either making the organization money, you're saving the organization money, you're improving the organization's reputation, but it has to be something that is aligned to what will help the organization to succeed and what is important to your executive. So it's not about you don't you know sometimes that we can feel very possessive of our work and like how can you be telling me this is what success looks like you know but you need to because at the end of the day it has to be in the context of what they want to see and so sometimes if i find that they they are off track i can always bring them back to the right place but i must take into consideration what is important to the organization
And so here's a sample framework from AMEC. I will do a separate video that explores different measurement frameworks. I'm mindful that I don't want this to become really academic because it can become quite technical, but please visit AMEX website. And there are two reasons why I advise you to visit AMEX website. They have a foundation course on measurement. They also have case studies that helps you to see how people have done different types of communication activities and campaigns, how they set their objective and how they measured. Every time I read a case study, it opens my eyes like, oh, wow, you can measure this. Oh, wow, you can do this this way. Case study really, really does help you. And I hope that we'll be able to see more case studies that are Africa related because a lot of these case studies are from Europe, America, you know, from the rest of the world, but they are still very useful. So in Amex framework, for example, you start, you can see here, align objectives, organizational objectives, communication objective. It's not idea doing that created this framework. It is AMEC. And you can see on the gray part, it says preparation. That's the start. You can't just run off and say, okay, do this. And yes, these are the strategies. No, you relax. This company, what do we want to achieve? What is our communication objective? And there has to be alignment. And it's still in the preparation stage. You're looking at your target audience. You're doing your research. You're planning. You're setting your target and other inputs. You're creating your strategy. Then you go to implementation, which is execution. So this is where you implement your program, the activity, the tactics that you have already set up. Then you come to measurement and insight. This is your output. You're measuring the activity. So we did this event. How many people came? We put this resource. How many people downloaded? Now, the thing with Amec is they separate outtakes from outcomes, but you can actually link the two together because it's about how the audience responded to the effect. So for example, we've put this report and this report improved awareness. This report led to behavior change. This report led them to subscribe to our website. This report led them to buy a product or do not, a, well, a report can lead you to buy a product or this content led them to buy a product. What was the audience response and effect? In the video that I will do, I would break down the difference between outtakes and outcomes. But for this one, you can just lump them into one. And then next is impact, organization and stakeholder effects. Stakeholder effects, especially for, for example, you're looking at, if you're looking at your shareholders, you're looking at your donors, you're looking at the community that is, what is the impact? And that is the framework. So if you have this in mind, when you're creating your comp strategy, you're just thinking, are my objectives aligned? Have I done my research? Do I have the data implementing? Am I measuring the activity? Am I taking note of the audience response and effect? And am I taking note of the effect on the organization and the stakeholders? It's a very, very simple framework. Now let's move on to choosing, before we move on to choosing the, the right metrics, one thing I would say about measurement framework is that you will need to develop the one for your organization. And this is where case studies help. You know, if you're going to be doing this for the first time, there's a lot of trial and error. You're going to have to see what works for you. Some big organizations may outsource this or have more um, resources at their disposal to have a very elaborate measurement framework. But if you're just starting, um, you're working in an organization that doesn't have so much money, you might just think about, okay, what can we reasonably measure. And that's why choosing the right metrics is very, very important. This will really depend on the objectives, what you want to achieve, what is required from your target stakeholder. So here I put cost per engagement, for example, percentage of conversions. So those of you that say, oh, comms doesn't bring sales, but there can be conversions. We can have 10,000 new followers. And out of those 10,000 new followers, 8,000 is engaged and we're able to, by collaborating with the sales team, you're tracking, you're monitoring. Maybe out of that number, you have 4,000 who um, bought a product or signed up for a service or attended an event. And how do you measure? It's very simple. A key simple way to do it is, for example, the numbers that you put on the content that goes on social media, maybe Facebook, Instagram, it needs to be different from other channels so that you can track what is coming from social media. So if it's a volume of calls, you can see the volume of calls that come from this number. If they need to sign up or there's some sort of um, Google form they need to fill, you will then track. So you see the names, you see the numbers. You will then track with sales because you will not have the CRM, the back end to see all of those information. But you can say, these are the names we got off Instagram, God of Facebook, or God of our Google form data, how many of them have subscribed, how many of them have confirmed, how many of them have done X, Y, Z, and then you can then begin to plot your numbers. But if you don't follow through in that way, 
you won't be able to. So sales takes all the credit. I'm like, oh, comes, what did you do? You brought us 10,000 followers and they can't see the correlation. So type of content, access the most. This also helps you to know what content resonates, what kind of content should you be creating, emotional response to delivered content, which pages of your website are accessed the most. So if you're doing a campaign and you you want your donation page to be the most um, visited one or there's a particular page with a certain call to action and you see that it's not the most visited page or people are not traffic there, it's very low, then something needs to change. So the metrics, again, really depends on your objective, but true metrics that say something so you can see i didn't put social media following i didn't put uh likes not that those things are not important but you have to think about the bigger context right you have to think about what will be relevant for my organization please measure all of those things but beyond them what is the outcome what is the outcome of us having 150 likes what is the outcome of us improving engagement by so 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 and so percentage so here are some measurements and evaluation tools. There are now a lot. So I didn't try to put all the tools here. But what I want you to take out from this is best practice, which is leveraging a combination of quantitative and qualitative tools. So you may need to do opinion polls and you can do them on social media, you know, Instagram stories. I love using Instagram stories for polls. You can do surveys, you can do market style audience research. Of course, that's going to require more money and expertise because you then have to analyze the data, which you may not have the skill for, and you need to bring a third party you can have case studies. So you get the testimonials. You see, okay, before our campaign, this was a situation. You know, while the campaign is going on, this is what we recorded. And this was the, the outcome or the result. And you can measure that over a period of time. This is specifically useful for long-term campaigns. Uh, tools you want to co consider. Coverage book. I love coverage book because it combines all your resources or all the information you've put your results and puts it into visually stunning reports. So he, it goes the extra mile of just creating a very nice report that communicates, helps you to calculate your metrics and develop them to easily understandable figures, which would make your organization smile. The only thing is that the pricing starts from $99 a month. There's Keyhole. I like Keyhole. I've used Keyhole. You're able to track social media um, campaigns, keywords, hashtags, and just real-time social media data. And then I love that it, it gives you graphs, very simple reporting that you can screenshot. It is $79 a month at the time I checked, but then there's also a free trial that can you can play around with. There's Brand24, which also helps you to monitor. This media monitoring is about $49. There's a free 14-day version there's talk walker which is almost like google alerts and please you should set google alerts for yourself and your organization or whatever keywords that is necessary for your industry very very important because that helps you to know what people are saying what's trending what's important and in case of crisis it just keeps you ahead so you can track brand, brand coverage allows you to send notifications so you may say what's the difference between talk water alert and google alert talk water just adds a bit more but most of us are familiar with google alerts mention analytics that is social listening to you should be doing social listening it's so important including twitter facebook instagram there is a 14 day free trial but it starts from 49 a month like i said to you my goal here is not to put all the tools these are just some tools that i've seen or i've leveraged and I've liked the results. Oftentimes, what I do, because I work as a consultant, so I'm not going to go and sign up for one tool that is 99 uh, pounds and or dollars, and I'm not if I only use it once a year or twice a year because the work that I do, I do more of training now. So I don't really execute campaigns that require it. But what I've learned to do is I'm very clear on the information I need. So last year, for example, I managed a conference and I wanted to do the result of what we were able to achieve. And I broke it down. So you just go on Google to find free tools. Okay, free social media or free hashtag tracking tool, free demo demographic tracking tool, free extra. So whatever it is that you want to measure and the reports that I put together, you think that I used a paid tool i use free tools and then i take advantage of this free trial a lot so i use a free trial that helps me to segment the data by location uh, another one helps me to segment um in terms of demography in terms of the keywords in different regions it was that in deep another thing is using the analytics from social media as well if you're running a social media campaign from facebook instagram twitter it's actually very important because twitter will 
Twitter before Elon, <laughs> gave very comprehensive data that you, you find very useful. So combine that, right? And then go on Google and Google, you know, whatever it is that you want to measure, look for the free tools. Then if you need pay tools, if for example, something is $49, you may be able to pay for that, right? Or you can start with a free trial. The only thing is that after the 14 days, the next time you need to do it, you have to pay for it. So that's how you, again, being strategic, being creative, that's how you can work around it. You know, you might find somebody that has access to pay to that, some organizations. So I know organizations that they use Meltwater, they use Talkworker, you know, you can collaborate with people in agencies to say, look, can we leverage on your measurement tool? There's so many ways to think about it. Like, you know, I'm one person that I think about what it is that I want to achieve. And I think about possible ways that I can achieve it. And I ask, you know, the worst the person can say is no, but A, if you have access to these tools, your agency is using it. Can I collaborate when I want to measure? I don't even mind paying a fraction of the cost every time I need to. That's something that the agency may be open to. So that's how I would advise you to approach it. Okay, putting together your final report. So you've implemented the campaign, you've done everything, you've measured. How are we going to report this? Now, it's very important to consider the interest and the background of the intended audience for the report. And here's why it is very important. If I remember... Before I go into that, I remember someone was asking me something and they were presenting their so the end of the year reports to the board and the board was like, how much money came in? You know, they weren't seeing the numbers. The board wants to see numbers. The board wants to see things that relate to organizational performance. So you can't just be telling them that we increased followers or we had certain social media likes. Yes, those things, measure them. But why? Um, I remember I was speaking to a, an executive a few years ago. I was trying to pitch him something, but that pitching, it taught me many valuable lessons. So for every proposition that I brought or every statement that I made, he would say, so what? And so what? I was so frustrated because I, you know, he had nailed your pitch. You're like, man, I didn't even got this. And I'm like, so what? And so what? And I'm like, yes, because of the, and so what? And so what? And so what? When we got to the exit, he clearly said I was frustrated. They said, look, I don't know, you have to refine your proposition that you can answer every so what so that the organization or the person that you're speaking to sees the value. Same thing that you need to do when you are reporting. And so what? Why should the board care? Why should our CEO care? Why should our organization care that we've increased certain metrics? whether on social media, offline, you know, why should they even care about reputation? You might think, uh-uh, but they should know why it's important. Yes, but you may need to tell them, right? You may need to educate them or, you know, press the importance to them, right? Don't take anything for granted as a comms person. So you need to think about who is it for? What information do they need or what information will be valuable to them? And that's why you have to think, really critically about who is this report going to? Is it just going to the board? Is it going to our CEOs? Is this going to our donors? Is it going to our external stakeholders? Because they have different interests and, and background and what they're looking out for. So you must also understand how should this information in the report be presented to them? There's some executives, this is your board, they want to see numbers. They want to see the linkages. How do we present this in, in a graphical way that they're able to see our results in terms of the numbers? So that's why tools like Coverage Book and Keyhole are very, very good for you because when you insert your metrics, they put them in a very nice graphical um, table kind of report that brings in figures. And then you need to be clear on how you will communicate the value, financial or otherwise. There are two things you can measure. You can measure return on objectives or you can measure return on investments. Comms can articulate returns on investment. I've done it so many times, so it is possible. You can also measure return on objectives. We may not have been able to bring in money. We may not have been able to save money but we've been able to do xyz that is beneficial and useful for the organization's objectives and we did it at the least cost possible so you must be able to communicate that if for example you were able to leverage your media relationships to get um, coverage visibility for your organization when you're reporting you're not gonna say oh we got free press what's that no you would say we got press worth 
$2,000 at little or no cost by leveraging on XYZ. Let them know the value of what you are bringing to the table. You can't just say something was free because if you think about it, nothing is really, really free. How much that front page feature that you were able to secure, that you were able to pitch for, what is the actual cost? What, what does it mean? And then you use the numbers from the media platforms. And a lot of media platforms have these numbers in their website. How many people see it? What is the worth of that? thing that you pitched for even if it's on a website you got them on primetime tv that's not free so you have to think about how do we communicate this in numbers so i'm communicating that we got something worth five thousand dollars but we did it through pitching we used x amount of money that, to achieve x amount of outcome so you can see why outcome and impact objectives are also very important so report the output and the outcome based results for each of the objectives that you set so we set objective one what was the output and what was the outcome you need to be measuring those things and then you must demonstrate how your strategy met the business organization need which is now the impact objective so those three objectives output outcome business results slash impact objectives are always critical and important because this is very or can be very technical if you want to learn more please engage with me i can literally do a three-hour class on measurement and show you how to create your measurement framework show you how you should be measuring show you how you need to be reporting um yeah so please feel free to reach out especially if you want to think through customizing a framework for your organization as well but here are some final tips don't take measurement as an afterthought. It needs to be something you think about right from the very beginning. You must evaluate as you go. And please leverage case studies. The things that I've learned, you know, yes, I, I went to university. I did a master's degree that has helped me. I've been exposed to a lot of tools and all. But the truth is, I have learned from case studies. I have learned from trying out different things, implementing different things. And I have seen what has worked and what has not worked. So case studies really, really help to help develop your measurement framework, go to AMEC. They have a lot of case studies. So you can even go to some of these websites of, you know, these communication awards. They have like um, criteria and they have the, when people are submitting their entries, they break it down. So you can see, mm, okay, this is how this person measured this. This is how this person measured that. And it will be very useful. And play around with some of these tools. Just Google the free tools, free measurement tools for communicators. Play around with it. See, the beautiful thing about what we do is that you can try different things, right? And you don't have to try them on your um, company's campaigns because again, if you try and you fail, it's not very great. I worked with an absolutely amazing boss that allowed me to try absolutely anything with his brand. And that was a good learning curve for me, but not everybody is going to give you the room to do that, but you can try on different things. And that's why I also like volunteering. Volunteering helps me to try you'll try an error in volunteering because hey they're not paying you you want to deliver value you're allowed to just you know go as creative as possible again depending on the on the platform you're volunteering for some can be quite strict but bottom line of all of these things is really find what works for you play around with the tools tweak it but learn the principles i'm teaching you the principles because when you learn the principles you can then say okay how can i build on what i know and it's as an aside that's how i approach food cooking so i learn how do you make jollof rice and what are the basic ingredients when i master it i say hmm, what if i put this what if i use this seasoning and i tweak it to what works for me but you have to learn the basics learn the principles and then you can build on it for your particular scenario i would like to end with these words from cindy crescenzo who is a communications leader she runs a communications agency and she says measurement boils down to understanding what does and doesn't work for your audiences once you can nail that down you see how you're contributing to the value of an organization so important if your organization is putting time and money towards the communication efforts it is worthwhile to identify what success looks like from the onset i didn't say it to a Cindy that said it you have to think about this organization is investing some sort of money. They may not be giving you a great budget, but they're at least paying you a salary, right? So what does success look like? What would come across as valuable for this organization? He says a CEO doesn't care if people got an email through desktop or mobile. 
They want to know how it influences behavior that will make the company succeed. At the end of the day, that is what your CEO cares about. That is what the board cares about. That is what the senior leaders care about. Whether you are working with a corporate organization or development organization, yes, development organizations, we want to impact, we want to do this. If you're not doing work that helps the organization to achieve its objective, your CEO does not care. So you need to care about the things that your CEO and your board care about. And then you need to frame your work in that context and see how you can create those linkages so that the value becomes very clear and very apparent. The final video in this bite-sized comms course is on overcoming common challenges that comms teams face. And I'll just be sharing a few tips that you can use as well. Thank you for watching.